You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou. Today, we are talking our day two recap of the USFL draft, going over some of my favorite picks of the second day. Second half of the draft went from rounds 13 all the way to round 35, so a very large group to pick from. I have six different players that I've highlighted from those rounds that I'll talk to you guys about today. So sit back, like the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on all the content I got coming your way. We're covering the USFL's grand opening season. We're also, of course, going through the NFL offseason. We'll be talking all the news as that comes out as well. We have free agency coming up next, not even next month, in like a few weeks. To, to If you're actually, yeah, free agency is coming up in a few weeks. So a lot that we're going to be talking about these next few weeks. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Now, let's talk day two of the USFL draft. Like I mentioned in the first video that I did, I'm not just going to sit down and break down each and every single player and pretend like I know everything about all of these people because realistically... Nobody really knew who was going to be in this draft pool to begin with, unless you were inside the USFL. So a lot of these names are either people nobody really knew about, but the people that I am talking about are people I either do know of or have kind of looked into because I did kind of briefly scan through a lot of the draft picks and just kind of seen where some people were coming from. And I highlighted guys that I felt are going to be impact players and they were drafted pretty much everyone in here first at their respective positions for their teams. So I expect them to be the impact players for this team. Hence why they were going first at their position for those teams. So first guy on my list, running back Stevie Scott going to the Panthers in round 27. This guy has a very impressive collegiate career under his belt. He played three full seasons for Indiana 2,543 yards on the ground, averaging four and a half yards per carry and 30 touchdowns on the ground. He's averaging 10 touchdowns a season. Then it threw the air. So not only is he on a threat on the ground, but a dual threat back at that. He's able to catch passes through the air as well. So he'll be a good piece in the receiving game. 55 receptions, 383 yards, two touchdowns on the receiving end of things. So the guy altogether, nearly 3,000 total yards coming from scrimmage, 32 total touchdowns. I, this is somebody who is going to be a great dual threat weapon for the offense over there for the Panthers. I'm excited to see how he plays out for the team. I think this is an excellent choice for them for their first running back that they selected there in round number 27. And I'm excited to see what he does. Should be a good playmaker for the Panthers. Second guy that I have listed up on here. We're looking at the safety position now going for the Bandits in round number 18 is safety Obi Henry Melifonwu. Played a couple of years in the NFL. I'm not really sure what happened to him because he was a second round draft pick and a lot of people expected to see a lot of things from him. He's very athletic and a really good corner when he was playing in college as well. So I don't really understand what happened with him. I'm pretty surprised that he ended up kind of falling out of the NFL because I expected kind of a lot of him coming out of the draft. But Again, second round draft choice. While he was playing at Connecticut, he had eight touchdowns, 349 tackles, 16 passes defense, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries. The guy was everywhere. He was a playmaker in college. You know, he, was, he wasn't no slouch. He went in the second round for a reason, and a lot of teams looked at him fairly highly going into this draft. I, I don't really know what happened. So with that being said, he has a past history of being a very good talent and a really good guy in the secondary and I'm pretty sure he was drafted as a corner, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm kind of surprised he's playing safety. I'm almost positive when he was drafted, it was a corner. But maybe I'm wrong on that one. But I'm pretty sure that that was the case. So I'm excited to see how he pans out. I think him being such a high-end talent and he was well-respected going through the draft process, I think that transfers over into the USFL fairly well. I think he ends up being a really solid piece in the secondary for the Bandits. I think this was an excellent choice for them there in round number 18. Next up, looking at a linebacker in round 21 going to the Maulers. I have EJ Ejia, and this is a guy that very impressive resume, despite the fact playing at a smaller school from North Texas, the Mean Green. This guy was 
excellent, especially in his senior year. Really, really came on strong his final season, so much so that the Ravens took notice of him and they brought him in uh, for a little bit of a short period of time as well. And if the Ravens are taking you, clearly you're doing something right. Even if they're just looking at you, when you think of the Ravens, you think of some really good linebackers in NFL history. And just overall, in general, the linebacking core is typically more elite than anything in Baltimore. So if the Ravens are taking a look at you, they obviously see some sort of talent and potential in you. But I mean, he had 272 tackles, 41 for a loss, 16 sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. His senior year, he had 51 QB pressures for North Texas. I mean, the guy was an absolute monster at the school, an excellent linebacker. And I think this is a great guy. And for somebody who, when I think of Pittsburgh, I think of hard hitting, you know, aggressive type of football, especially defensively. Pittsburgh, known for their defense, the Steelers. I'm hoping the Maulers are able to, you know, live up to that same sort of adage. I think the Maulers taking a guy like EJ Edja, excellent, excellent choice there in round 21. Next up on my list. Looking at a wide receiver, this one is for the Stallions. They took him in round at number 13, spent a couple of uh, spent some time on a couple of different teams in the NFL. We got wide receiver Victor Bolden, dual threat type of guy, able to do some stuff on the ground, able to do some stuff through the air. Again, I'm all for like the multifaceted players, especially in a situation where we're drafting for the first time with this league. Nobody really knows exactly what role everyone's going to play. We're kind of going in blind with this here. So getting a guy that is multifaceted and can do multiple things for you, I think is is far more valuable than just taking like a, 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 a guy who's just a receiver or maybe just a specific slot guy or maybe a guy that's just good on the ground as a running back. Finding people that can do things through the air and on the ground is excellent. And this is something that as a guy who came from Oregon State, did a lot, 170 receptions, 1,863 yards, seven touchdowns receiving, and then he also had nearly 100 attempts on the ground, 727 yards, and three rushing touchdowns. And not only to talk about all of that, but he even contributed on special teams. He had four total touchdowns between punt and kick returns while he was playing in Oregon as well. You couple that with having a little bit of experience in the league, playing in some, you know, preseason action, things like that, practice squad. He's been around the block. He's, you know, he can help you in literally every stage of the game offensively and even on special teams. Should be an excellent piece for them there, and I expect him to be a building block for the offense of the Stallions. I really like this choice. Like I said, you're going into this blind. You don't really know what you're going to get out of everyone, so if you're bringing in guys that can do multiple things for you and fill multiple holes and needs, this is the type of player you're looking for, and I think the Stallions nailed this pick in round 13. Next up on my list, this one coming from round 24, and for the Bandits, I got interior defensive lineman Dalen Mack. Big name from a big school in the SEC. Impressive collegiate resume over at Texas A&M, playing in 47 total games for them, 108 tackles, 27 of those tackles for loss. He had eight sacks, five and a half during his senior season, his last year where he was really coming on strong couple of forced fumbles as well. The guy's 6'1", 335 pounds. He's a big dude and a mauler up in the middle there. Bounced around the league. He was a fifth-round draft pick by, again, Baltimore. And like I said, Baltimore has high standards for when it comes to you know the defensive side of the football. If you're getting noticed by them... I think it means a lot, in my opinion. I, you know, I've always looked at Baltimore as a defensive heavy team. They always boast really good players, especially on like the D line and the linebacking core. That seems to be their forte more than anything else. A lot of respect for when Baltimore looks at you and is willing to place a draft pick on you. At that, the guy played at a big time school in college. I really like this pick when you're going defensive line, you want to go big name. You want to go a guy that's going to make an impact. And I think Dalen Mack can definitely be that guy for the bandits. Excellent choice. In my opinion, really like this one for them in round 24. And then for my final pick, really good one as well. Another skill position guy, this one back in round 27 running back Mike Weber for the generals. Another dual threat type of guy who can do multiple things for you and be effective on the ground and through the air. Despite him being a running back, he can contribute on the ground or through the air. He played at the Ohio State University for three seasons, 2,676 yards rushing, 
averaging a whopping 5.9 yards per carry. So if they can build a solid line for him, this is a guy that was super effective in college at moving the ball when he got the opportunity. 24 touchdowns as well to boot on top of that. And then through the air, 54 catches, 297 yards. He had a touchdown through the air as well. So again, a guy that's effective on the ground and through the air. Multifaceted guy. He went to a big name college. This is another really good pick, in my opinion, where you're looking for guys who can contribute in multiple areas and be that dual threat type of weapon for you. Generals hit it home on this one. I really, really like this pick one for them. Looking forward to see how he pans out for them. But that is my favorite picks coming out of day two. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Is there any specific player you were excited to see get drafted by any teams? But that is all for now. I appreciate you all for watching. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.